Hey, welcome to Fart's 30 Second Somewhat Guides. There is a lot of trash in this raid and it can be quite difficult since the packs are so big. Every time we see a new mob, I'll outline what they do and then just a quick priority list for each of the other packs so I'm not wasting your time. First mob you'll find is a Sunblade Protector. This hits the tank extremely hard and does a Chain Lightning ability. You should stack up behind and nuke this down fast. The mobs you'll face here are Mages, Blinks and do a lot of AoE damage. Dawn Priest, cast Holy Nova, you can interrupt, renews other trash, dispel it. Cabalist, mana burns, Dust Priest, fears and dots players, dispel them. Vindicator, cleaves the closest two targets, puts a Mortal Strike debuff on the tank, can be disarmed. Slayer, puts a dot on a player that will deal percentage damage over 8 seconds, which will kill them if not healed through. Dragonhawk, Flame Breath, face this away from the raid. Your general priority list is as follows. Recommend sheeping any mages and leaving them until last, otherwise prioritize these first. Then the Dawn Priest, Cabalist, Dusk Priest, Vindicator, Slayer, and then the Dragonhawk. Alternatively, depending on how much CC you have, you can CC everything and just kill stuff one by one. CC mages, Dawn Priest, Cabalist, Vindicator, Slayer, Dragonhawk, then kill the mages. Quick freeze frame. Now the scout will patrol around, these are similar to the Zolomon scouts. If you pull them, they'll run to the closest Sunblade Protector, the big robots, and activate them. It is advised that any opportunity you get to pull a robot dude on its own, you take. So ideally, you want to pull this robot on the left, while the scout is far away. Not only does the scout run and activate a robot, it will also be linked to another full trash pack, no matter how far away it is. They have a massive aggro range, so you can't get too close. The best tactic to take care of them seems to be distracting and mind soothing, so your ranged DPS can get ready to precast at max distance to one-shot the scout. This will trigger the next trash pack to aggro, so get ready. CC the mage, two dawn priests, cabalist, dust priest, vindicator, then once you're done, kill the robot behind. This is a patrol that will walk up fairly close to the last trash pack. CC the mage, kill dawn priest, dust priest, then vindicator. Another scout pack, you know what to do. Then CC two mages, kill Cabalist, Dawn Priest, Vindicator, Slayer, then Dragonhawk. Kill the robot in the corner. Kill scout. After this, it's recommended to line a sight them back around the corner. This is because there is another scout very close to this pack. CC the mage, Dawn Priest, Cabalist, two Dust Priest, then the Vindicator. You want to pull the robot on the right before engaging the scout for this pack. Kill the scout, CC mage, two Dawn Priests, Cabalist, Dust Priest, then the Vindicator. Now we're finished with the scouts, CC the mage, dawn priest, cabalist, dust priest, then vindicator. I'm just going to put it up on screen for these ones. Kill the final robot before you face... Kalagus. For this boss you need at least three tanks. Tank the boss where you like, don't stand in front or behind it. Split your raid into four groups, each group should try to have a tank, some healers and DPS. Pick a spot in the room to group up, but stay spread by at least 8 yards. You'll gain a stacking arcane debuff in this phase that is cleared when entering the shadow phase. Around every 20 seconds, the boss will send a player to the shadow realm. If that player was in your group, then go click the portal that spawned on them. You'll be teleported to the other boss, stack up in here, save DPS cooldowns for this boss. If you have a tank, then taunt the boss, otherwise you can let Kellogg's tank the boss. Just make sure he gets heals. There'll be a curse that goes around, decurse it when it's halfway done with its duration. After 60 seconds, you'll be pooped out back to the start phase. You'll have a debuff for 60 seconds where you can't enter the Shadow Realm again. This fight is just rotating groups in and out to kill the bosses at the same time. They'll both enrage when they reach 10% HP. There's a robot dude here. CC the mage, kill Dawn Priest, Cabalus, Dust Priest, then Vindicators. Hey, look at that. You're now at the next boss. Brutalus. Have your raid set up like this. The boss will cast a Meteor Slash, a massive Kernel ability that splits damage between all targets hit. You want half the raid to be soaking this at a time. This Slash increases fire damage taken, so you only ever want to take three stacks of this. Once the boss has cast this three times, have the second tank taunt and face the boss to the other half of the raid. You want to make sure you are spread out as the boss will put fire on a player. This jumps to others if you are too close. Ideally, you do not want to soak the slashes if you have this debuff on you, so make your way over to the other side that is not currently tanking the slashes, taking care not to give the debuff to anyone else on your way. You have six minutes before she berserks. Once you kill Brutalis, stay where you are because the next boss is about to spawn. Felmist. Tank the boss like this, it cleaves but doesn't do a tail swipe. 
have three range groups away from each other but stacked up together. The boss will cast Gas Nova every 20 seconds, which puts a dot on all players. It deals a lot of damage and drains mana. You should master spell this off ASAP. The boss will cast Encapsulate on a player. This lifts them off the ground and deals big AoE damage. Run away from them fast and make sure they're healed, then regroup once it's over. After 60 seconds, the boss will fly up into the air, the player will be targeted by a laser, run away, adds will spawn from the laser gas, tank them and AoE them down fast. After the beam finishes, keep an eye on the boss as it will do a deep breath similar to Anixia. Watch which way the head faces as it will signify if it's going to breathe on the top, middle or bottom. Repeat these phases until the boss is dead. Make your way over to this ramp and you've got some new trash to play with. This part of the trash is a gauntlet, you'll see some red imps running down the ramp. When they reach you, they will explode. To counter this, have a beefy tank run up and intercept the imp before it reaches the raid. The following mobs you will face are Assassins, Stealthed, you can anime teleport behind you. Life Shaper, puts drain life on a target, dispel it. Mana Fiend, AoEs, drains mana from everyone. Vanquisher, cleaves the closest two targets, puts a stacking armor debuff on the tank. Soulbinder, AoE mind controls that you can dispel and can summon two of the following adds. An Infernal, which does AoE damage, and a Slayer, that puts Mortal Strike on the tank. Commander, does a battle shout which buffs adds around him, can also stun the tank. Deathbringer, gives you diseases. Again, you can CC all this trash, but to be honest it should die very quickly. Your priority should be Mana Fiend, Soulbinder, Life Shaper, Commander and Vanquisher, and pretty much even, Deathbringer and then Assassin. After the gauntlet, there will be four Soulbinders in the next room. You can pull the right two separately, pull them back outside the room, then pull the other two. You can skip this next pack if you hug the stairs to the right and just go down. Patrol comes up the stairs, Mana Fiend first, then Life Shaper. Mana Fiend first, then the Vanquishers, then the Assassin. Make your way into the room and you will face... Eridar Twins. Tank the two bosses like this, with ranged on the upper ledge. Have two tanks on Sacrilesh as she does a threat drop. Make sure the tanks are always first and second on threat. This boss will turn to a player and cast Conflag. If you are the target of this, you need to run away from the group. If you're ranged, run back to the entrance of the room. If you're melee, run underneath where the ranged is stacked. It does an AoE stun and puts a massive dot on whoever is hit. Make sure you heal through this. Any shadow or fire damage you take will give you a debuff that makes you take more damage. Simply reset this by taking the damage from the other school of magic. Alothis will put fire on the ground, have the tank move out of this. She will also gain a buff called Pyrogenics. This increases fire damage done. Dispel this. DPS just needs to focus Sacrilash. Once she's dead, Rain should just jump down and everyone stack up behind the boss. The boss will cast a shadow over on a player. You want to stack with the raid and most importantly hit the tank with this AoE. It will dispel the fire debuff they have. Oblivion Mage puts a seed of corruption in the raid. Can polymorph a lot of people, dispel them, stacking fire damage on the tank. Doomfire Destroyers summons adds, AoE them down so you don't get overwhelmed. Stack these up, you want to focus down the mages first whilst killing the adds that spawn from the destroyer. Remember Volatile Fiends explode so AoE them down and melee run out. Priestess of Torment does a whirlwind and its melee attacks burn mana from the target. Painbringer will increase damage the longer it's alive, can be disarmed. Nuke the Priestess of Torment first, then the Painbringer and finally the mages. There will be a lot of trash on this floor, you don't need to kill it. If you just stick close to the right wall you shouldn't pull them. Apocalypse Guards, cleave up to three targets, stuns and dots the tank, at low HP will become immune to all damage apart from Holy. Focus down one guard at a time, once it becomes immune, DPS should switch whilst Holy Damage Dealers finish the first one off. Cataclysm Hound, Dispel and Rage, will do a Flame Breath which can put a load of different debuffs on people, dispel and cleanse them all fast. More Fiends, melee don't die. Two more Apocalypse Guards, remember one at a time, once these are dead, get ready to wipe on. Mauru. Tank the boss where it is. Every 60 seconds, Blood Elf ads will spawn at the entrance. Have a tank ready to pick them up. Tank them on Muru and DPS them down with the boss. Interrupt the fireballs that the mages cast and spell steal or dispel the debuff they have. A big Voidwalker will spawn at the edge of the room. Keep it tanked away from the group as it pulses AoE damage. Range need to kill it. Once it dies, it will spawn its eight Voidwalker children. Murder them quick or enslave them if you're a warlock. Every 45 seconds, Mauru will drop a dark circle around them. Melee run out. Eight dark fiends will spawn that will explode. You can dispel these to kill them. A well-placed master spell in the middle of the circle will hit all of them. Once Mauru dies, Entropius will spawn. Spread out around the room, small void zones will appear under players that will spawn a dark fiend. Dispel them to kill them. Black holes will appear. It's a weird circle that will flail you around and deal damage. Avoid it. 
The boss will also cast a chain lightning ability called Negative Energy. This hits three people. Every 12 seconds, it will hit one more person, so you have to kill the boss before this begins hitting too many people. You have a 10 minute berserk timer from the initial start of the fight. Shadow Soul Guardian does an earthquake and charges the player. These require a lot of healing, melee can jump to take less damage, and if the charge focuses a non-plate wearer, have a warrior intervene the target. Finally, prepare yourself to phase. Kill Jaden. Phase 1. Kill ads, either AoE or spread them out. Phase 2. The boss will spawn. Spread around half the room by at least 10 yards. Fire Bloom puts a dot on 5 players that deals AoE fire damage. This is why you're spread. Blue orbs will spawn above the boss, range focus these down. At 85% health, have someone click the orb to become a dragon. You want to stack up on the boss, unless you have the flame debuff, so the dragon can do both breaths on the raid. The boss casts Sinister Reflection, which will spawn 4 adds from a player. Once these have spawned, go back to being spread. AoE the adds with the boss. Shadow Spikes will target players. You can move out to avoid this, but you may take fire damage from someone close with the debuff. When the boss casts Darkness of a thousand farts or whatever, stack up and get your dragon to use the shield ability. This makes you take 95% less damage. It drains 10% of the dragon's health every second it's channeled, so try to time it towards the end. At 55%, stack up again for the Sinister Reflection cast. The boss will now start spawning meteors, avoid them. Two new dragon orbs will be available for this phase. At 25%, stack up again for the Sinister Reflection. The boss takes increased holy damage and four dragon orbs will be available. More meteors will spawn and more of those floating orbs will spawn. Oh, finally finished. I put so much effort into these ones. I hope they're received well. Maybe I'll even get a Patreon subscriber. That would be awesome. That would make my year. If I got one more Patreon subscriber, that would make my entire life. Maybe Asmongold will watch this one. Then I could retire. Ah, <sighs> uh, good old Burning Crusade. You're a good expansion. But I think your time's kind of over now. Blizzard seems to think so. What's this? Reusable content? All the guides are done. I could just re-upload these. Nobody would know. I'd know. No. I think what I'll do is make the best guides that Wrath of the Lich King has ever seen. I'll see you guys then.